Hi, everybody. I am so excited to be here today to sign my first budget as mayor. Thank you all for joining us today. Today's budget is really a team effort. It involved so many of you here who made this possible, coming together to put together what is going to be, I think, one of the best budgets to implement what we know are our priorities so that we can see positive change on our streets here in San Francisco every day. I'd like to thank our board president, uh, Malia Cohen, who's here today, who led the budget process, along with members of the Budget and Finance Committee, Supervisor Stephanie, Supervisor Fewer, and Supervisor Yi. And I also like to thank members of the Board of Supervisors who are here today, Supervisor Mandelman, Supervisor Brown, Supervisor Safai, and Supervisor Tang, and thank you to all the other elected officials who are joining us, as well as our budget and legislative analysts who now will be fighting me as mayor. <laughs> Harvey Rose and our controller, Ben Rosenfield, and the director of the mayor's budget office, Kelly Kirkpatrick. These, yes, you can give all those people a hand. You know, these are really challenging times for our nation, and we have a federal administration pursuing an agenda that threatens our core values and dismantles programs which help people that we know need them the most. But this is not the first time San Francisco has faced threats from the federal government, and sadly, it won't be the last. Now, more than ever, our city must respond by standing up for our values, protecting our residents, and making smart investments for the future of our city. This budget is a clear reflex reflection of our priorities, a clear demonstration of how we will invest our prosperity into making sure that there is equity and inclusion. And we are happy to be here today at Bishop Swain Community House because my top priority as mayor is homelessness. We need to get people out of tents, off the streets, and into the care and shelters that they need. And Bishop Swain, a permanent We'll just let that go by. We're going to ban helicopters in the city. <laughs> Bishop Swing, a permanent supportive housing site for formerly homeless individuals, does exactly what we want to see happen in our city. I met earlier with some residents here, and it is clear that our problem with homelessness is not intractable. Budget investments like the ones that we are making today change people's lives. Michael, who I met here, was homeless for three years, sleeping in his van, living on the streets, sleeping in Golden Gate Park after he lost his job of 14 years. He is now housed and living a great life. Brenda is here today as well. 60, oh Brenda, is it okay? I better not tell your age. <laughs> Homeless for four years before being connected to Bishop Swing by the sanctuary, a 24 hour shelter in the South and Market neighborhood. These two examples are what happens when we provide a safe environment and permanent supportive housing where we can make real progress. And the budget includes $60 million in new funding for critical homeless services for programs which will include 430 new permanent supportive housing units over the next two years. Now we know that it's not enough to simply get people indoors. Once they get the care and assistance they need, we are committed to providing permanent supportive housing and committed to making sure we do more to create housing in our city. $4.4 million will go to operate a navigation center specifically for transitional age youth, that's young people between the ages of 18 and 24. $12 million is allocated to expand rapid rehousing programs for youth and adults. 
and two million will go towards creating two access points to families and residents struggling with homelessness. Additionally, this budget will fund four new navigation center facilities, including one that specifically works with women and expecting mothers. These navigation centers go beyond the traditional shelters and offering intense counsel intensive counseling and services to help people break the cycle of addiction, poverty, and homelessness. An important contributing factor, as many of us know, to homelessness is people who sadly are struggling with drug addiction. We're investing $6 million to create a dedicated street medicine team, a first in the nation program to bring treatment directly to people suffering with addiction on our streets. Finally, we know the best way to fight homelessness is to keep people housed in the first place. This past election, voters approved Proposition F, which provides a right to counsel for tenants who face eviction. And I'm proud that this board and this mayor is investing $5.8 million to fund this program. Additionally, we are reviewing our, renewing our commitment to creating and preserving affordable housing by investing more than $800 million to construct and preserve over 3,000 units of affordable housing. While we work to help our homeless population into care and shelter, it is clear that the daily conditions on our streets are unacceptable. I'm committed to cleaning up our city. I want people in San Francisco when they walk out the door to feel the difference when they step outside. This will take a focused, sustained effort and we're making the investments to make this happen. In addition to the $67 million that we are currently spending on street cleaning, $13 million in new funding over the next two years will go to fund comprehensive efforts um, that will help make a difference. 44 new neighborhood cleaners split across all of the districts here in the city so that no supervisor is upset about getting their fair share. We are opening five new pit stops and we're expanding the hours so people have restrooms to use rather than using our streets for that purpose. And we are expanding our efforts in cleaning up needles. Um, that is going to be so important to the cleanliness of our streets and the quality of life. I also recently announced that we are going to be investing another $725,000 for the Fix-It team. These are really neighborhood-driven projects that can help make the neighborhoods better based on feedback from community members. This is all a part of making our communities safe and making our communities clean. This budget includes a strategic plan that will deploy 250 new officers on our streets. Over the next two years, you will see more foot patrols throughout the city and additional officers will be added to help address violent crime and property crime. This budget also includes $1.7 million in funding to implement the 272 reforms recommended to our city by Obama's Department of Justice. <laughs> and we are adding, because Supervisor President Cohen is making us do this because of her leadership around police accountability, another $1.5 million to create four new positions at the Department of Police Accountability. When I was on the Board of Supervisors, one of my proudest accomplishments was helping address our ambulance crises. But today, there are still emergency response issues we know we need to tackle. We're adding personnel resources to the 911 Emergency Dispatch Center to ensure that San Franciscans get the immediate help they need, especially when there's an emergency. We're investing $1.5 million in funding for the fire department to staff a medical assistance response team to quickly respond to medical service calls in the Tenderloin and Civic Center areas where we know there is a high call volume for those services. All of these investments equal one thing, positive change for our residents, and I'm optimistic that we are gonna be able to make these changes together. When you walk the streets, you will feel the difference. 
from our new neighborhood cleaning crews. Our mental health and homelessness investments mean quicker and better responses to people who are in crises on our streets. This budget's investment in police means more beat officers in our neighborhoods, more fully trained with 21st century policing. And our significant spending on affordable housing demonstrates my commitment to a more affordable San Francisco. This budget, completed by consensus by so many of you here today, represents our values for a safer, cleaner, more equitable city. I keep saying this, I want to feel the difference. We all love this amazing city. Many of us who work for city and for the nonprofits that represent a lot of these investments, we know how hard it is to get our city to a better place. We want to do that. We want to focus on making San Francisco better. And these dollars, invested right, are the first step to help us to get to that better place. And I am excited to be signing this budget, and I am I'm gonna be even more excited when I see this money put to work on the streets of San Francisco so that each and every San Franciscan can feel the difference for a new, more cleaner, more safer, more beautiful city. Thank you all for being here. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to the president of the board who also was the finance chair for this budget, Sup Supervisor Malia Cohen. Hi everyone, what city would we be in if there were not the occasional hecklers, right? Well, I'm excited, I'm excited to be here. You heard the remarks from the mayor, she talked about how the budget was going to be spent. And I want to spend a couple minutes to talk about the process that we went through that brought us to where we are today. Um, first of all, this is an $11 billion budget. It's a reflection of the values of the city of St. Francis a city that both of us grew up in, and there are many San Franciscans that are out there today. This uh, budget is supporting the city's most vulnerable with compassion and dignity, and, and, and also it helps us solve some of the problems that we are facing. It's a result of a robust, transparent, and inclusive process with an open and often vigorous discussion around our priorities. What I'm most proud of are the investments to reduce street homelessness, and I want to acknowledge our guests here. Thank you for allowing us to be in your home today. And I also want to call out that we are champions for public safety for all citizens. Uh, and we are also committed to making sure that our streets and our parks are clean, that they are safe. And I'm proud of our commitment to serve the residents of all of San Francisco. So some of you may remember previous budget, priority, uh, previous budget processes as being bruising. Yes, no? Yes, says Ben Rosenfeld. Yes, <laughs> bruising and sometimes contentious and would somehow draw the ugliness out of not only department heads, not only out of elected officials, but also out of our, our, our advocates. I'm just being very honest here. And you know, I, the mayor talked about how she was excited to be signing her first budget. I'm excited to be signing my last budget. Now, I'm grateful that I was given the opportunity to chair the Budget and Finance Committee, and it truly has opened my eyes um, on, 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 on the entire internal workings of local government. But also, many things were revealed to me last year that I set out to correct this year, one of which is how we evaluate the departments that are making requests. And for what reason are we not more policy-driven? So my goal, along with my legislative team headed up by Sophia Kittler, our goal was to take out the politics of the budget process and really infuse the policy aspect of, of how we are driving our budget. And I think that we created a budget that was more transparent, that created robust, in-depth, in and thoughtful policy conversations that helped shape why we do what we do. I mean, in essence, we're all public servants, most of us took an oath to be here, but we are serving because we believe in the work that we're doing. We believe that we are giving an opportunity to help people and have a po to help them have a positive impact on their life. And we cannot lose, ever lose that focus. 
and sometimes it gets lost. So what we set out to do was to have a stronger, more transparent, and more democratic process. We wanted to make sure that we were funding our greatest needs and investing in the most effective programs. You see, this is a unique process because if you recall, the budget actually starts in September. Many people don't know that, but the process starts in September, and last September, it started with Ed Lee. He gave a directive to his department heads. He gave some rules uh, on, on, on com some constraints uh, on where, and where the budget priority should be, and then by December, uh, department heads have an idea on where they're going. They submit this budget, excuse me, so Ed Lee has his hands on, on this budget, and then you may recall he had an untimely death, and so then we were placed into a chaotic state. Mayor Farrell then made the presentation on June 1st on, hi, on, on the budget. He had his fingerprints on this budget. And so now we're gonna be celebrating, signing a budget that has the fingerprints of our Mayor London Breed. And that is a unique moment in history. We really need to celebrate this and highlight this because we are resilient and we did it. And we didn't do it alone. There were certain parameters that the budget team um, had up by Kelly Kilpatrick and also our controller, Ben Rosenfeld, helped put into, put into place. And one of the things that we did was we took a full comprehensive list of all of the requests across the entire city. And folks, I want to tell you that was $140 million. $140 million of asks that my colleagues had, that advocates had, that department heads had, and we comprised this list. And instead of making this list secret, we made it public. We put it on the website and we made it available to everyone. And I think that that helped demystify the process about the budget process. Uh, uh, that has mystified many people for many years. And what we also did was we had long multi-departmental meetings to understand not only what we had funded in previous years, but also how we are doing in those areas. Are we as a city and are we as a department, are we meeting our mark? Or are we continuously throwing money out there, trying and hoping to meet our mark? So we introduced some metrics that we're going to be implementing, I hope, into the future. I will not be here, so I'll be looking at my colleagues to do that, to evaluate whether or not we are doing a good job on funding programs that are solid and that are helping us solve major problems that we have identified, um, uh, such as homelessness, such as ho cleanliness of the streets. We use these priorities as a framework to evaluate the, the budget's proposed, uh, depart, uh, proposed bud, uh, budgets. And so we were asking critical questions such as, how do these investments made further the priorities of the department? Are the investments missing anything? As we know, the June budget season has always been a chaotic time where the community benefit organizations and frankly, those the people that are our frontline folks that are working on the ground, they have come directly to the board to ask for additional funding. I'm proud to say that nothing was cut. As a matter of fact, the list of funding that you heard the mayor pr present to you are expansions of programs, and that is a good thing. That means our budget is continually growing. And I, at this point, would be remiss if I did not thank Carmen Chu, the assessor recorder who was instrumental in identifying and bringing in the resources so that we could, of course, have the fun of spending it. So this, this has been a very iterative process. I'm grateful. There are many people that I want to take a moment to thank, and I will would like to just call out not only the committee, the Budget and Finance Committee, the Vice Chair Sandy Fewer, uh, Supervisor Yi, Supervisor Stephanie. I also want to recognize Supervisor Sheehy because he had a significant role in shaping this discussion as well. Um, John Givner, who was our Deputy uh, City Attorney, giving excellent advice. He is a fantastic sparring partner when you disagree with him, so you better be on your P's and Q's when you do. And Ben Rosenfeld, who has been just a rock through this entire process. He is our controller. He has an excellent staff and gives solid and sound advice. And Kelly Kirkpatrick, a wonderful woman that stepped up in, uh, in the absence of Melissa Whitehouse um, and has now been donned <laughs> the queen of the budget. <laughs> the budget team. Uh, I also want to recognize Harvey Rose because Harvey Rose is a critical entity in the process of the budget because he takes out the, the politics and he just goes straight to the numbers and goes straight to the crux of the issue and he squeezes 
Sometimes blood comes out of this process. But he squeezes dollars and cents that allows us to begin the discussion on how we can add to the budget priorities laid out by the mayor's office. So Harvey Rose, thank you. You have been a fantastic and a consummate professional. And I want to thank your entire team. And of course, the clerk of the board, Linda Wong, she's not with us today. But as you all know, the clerks run the machine. They run the committees. They start on time, we end on, well, we end relatively on time. But the notes are there, and it is. Imp it, I would not be able to do my job if I did not have the outstanding help of Linda Wong. So folks, I hope you will enjoy this moment. Um, I'm excited to stand next to Mayor Bree to sign her first, my last budget. And I just want to say congratulations to all the department heads that participate in this process, that come before the uh, Budget and Finance Committee and they plead their case. I've tried to make the process fun and thoughtful and most importantly, informative. And with that, I thank you. Malia Cohen. The last point I want to make as we sign this budget, I want us all to remember that we know that there's a lot of work to do. And the work that we do every single day can be the difference between someone's life and whether or not they make it. And that's why when you go out there and you spend this money, make sure you remember that everything that you do for the city, it matters. It matters for people like Michael. It matters for people who are here in this location where we are today. And so let's make every dollar count. Let's make every dollar matter for the lives of so many San Franciscans. And I want to make sure, again, that we walk out the doors and we feel the difference for a better San Francisco. Now let's sign this budget. Band. Um, there you go. All right, here we go. We got a budget. 